Today I have two farmhouse thrift flip projects. Keep watching. So if you like blue, you're going to love this. This crop came from Goodwill. It's got a little farmhouse scene on it. It's cream colored with this gorgeous blue. Needs a little cleaning, but it's got a lot of potential. I have some ribbon that came from Goodwill. The little scrap of this one too. This is a silk. This one came from Dollar Tree. Really pretty gingham, blue and white. You're gonna find that over with the regular ribbon. These are some thrifted floral picks, some greenery, and these beautiful blue, I don't know, they look like Gerbera daisies maybe. Really pretty. The yellow center is a creamy yellow. And then these little wispy picks. Do not know what they are, but they are gonna look great in this flip. So we're gonna start by stuffing the bottom of this crock or this, um, what would you call this, urn maybe? We're gonna stuff it with a little bit of paper that I saved out of an Amazon box. It's the things that we had ordered. It's really good for this. Crumple it up, stuff it in the bottom. You can use Walmart bags or whatever you have on hand. And then we're gonna cut a piece of this foam to go in the top. This is just some leftover that I had. Um, it was also something that was thrifted. And I'm just gonna shove a piece down in the top. If you, do, if you skip this part and you don't put the foam in, your flowers are gonna kind of flop around and you want it to have something to grip to. So I've changed the angle a little bit to show you what I'm doing. These flowers have been clipped at different lengths and I did this intentionally because I want this to be sort of an asymmetrical arrangement. I'm just gonna place these three in where they feel to me like they look right. And then I'm gonna put this one pick that I have with the little wispies on it, sort of in the back. And I'm gonna add these green pieces in here and there, more toward the bottom. So it looks like our blue flowers are blooming and coming right off the top. I get so many flowers and picks and greenery pieces from thrift store. Um, you just can't beat the price and you can get some huge arrangements, um, you know, made from just a very small amount of money. So I'm gonna put some of the smaller picks toward the bottom and the taller ones toward the back a little. What do you think about the color so far? Oh, I love that. I love the soft green with that. It looks really nice together. And so simple to me, it just, it screams out farmhouse in the simplicity of it. It looks like you could walk right off of your porch and pick this from some wildflowers outside. Okay, these also came from the um, thrift store random little pieces that I had, but I didn't like the dark green foliage to me that looked a little too dark for what I was going for. So I'm just gonna put a couple of these little picks in here without the greenery, just peeling all that off. Just a few, I don't want this arrangement to be as full as the last arrangement we did. I wanna keep it airy and wispy and open so that we can see lots of light around it. Then I'm gonna do is, I thought at first I might do a bow, but then I changed my mind and I'm taking about 14 inches here of the three different colored ribbons or styled ribbons. These are not wired at all. You don't need that for this project. And I'm just going to tie those around the neck of this container. They're just stacked. I'm gonna leave a little, just leave the little tails hanging down. No bow, very, very simple. Just a knot. Anybody can do that. I'm gonna move this kind of off 
to the side instead of leaving it in the center. You can, once you get your ribbons pulled apart so that you can see all your little layers, you can, um, if you need to tack it down to your container with a little dot of hot glue, you can do that. Um, I didn't do it for this. You can dovetail the ends if you want, or you can just cut them on a slant. Um, and if you wanted to leave them just straight across the bottom, you could. But for me, I like to give it a, a more of a finished look. And I think the slant is good for this. So just, how's that? Isn't that pretty? Okay, flip number two. We are taking this one solitary napkin that I found at Goodwill and this embroidery wreath, this thick wooden large wreath. And then I have some thrifted ribbon and I also have some ribbon from Dollar Tree. I just decided to show you the measurement of this and this is about a 14 inch, I think, um, loop. So if you know anything about these loops, you just loosen the screw and you take the top layer off. I'm laying my napkin on the bottom or the inner ring and I'm going to center the top over that line where it was folded and what you're going to do is push that down tighten the screw a little bit at a time and instead of having to iron out the napkin if you will pull from both sides evenly as you tighten it down a little bit at a time you will have no wrinkles and you will have no lines left um, no fold lines left in your um in your napkin this looks French farmhouse to me. What do you think? All right, and I'm just going to take my napkin and you could cut this off at this point if this is something that you want to do, but I'm just gonna take mine, roll it under, and then tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. I'm protecting my fingers because I will be likely coming in contact with that glue, doing it this way. You're just going to tuck and roll down to just try to make a neat little finished back. This is going to help protect if you put it against a surface. It will keep you from having scratches on your surface. And you're just going to do this all the way around the hoop. You know, at first when I got this napkin, I was disappointed because I only had one, but then I thought, hey, when I saw it with that crop, I thought, yeah, I know what I'm gonna do with that. So I've just taken a loop of burlap string, or uh, excuse me, jute string here, and put it across the center of that screw in the middle of that square piece up there. Not all the wreaths had such a thick um, block up there, but in this case, it's a good thing because it's going to give me some place to put the bow that I'm fixing. So I'm just going to make loops in this. Um, it's like a denim wired ribbon and I'm just going to make loops. And I think, I can't remember exactly what my measurement was, but I think I have like a seven inch um, across. So I have three loops on either side and I'm cutting it off without a tail. So there it is, just the loops. I'm going to do the same thing with this burlap and lace piece. There are going to be three loops. If you turn it over on the side, you can count three and then three. Cut off the excess here. Hold it in half. And then you're gonna take your scissors, cut just through the wire and just a bit onto the fabric. I've seen this done by a couple of crafters, but the lady who comes to mind is Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home. And she calls this her Olivia boat. It's called lots of things, but this is what I'm gonna do with mine. So um, the thinner ribbon is the one with the burlap. It's actually not quite as wide as the blue. So I'm gonna put it on top. It actually, for some reason, ended up being a little bit bigger my loops did because I didn't measure it but that's okay not gonna be a problem you'll see what happens so don't get disappointed if you do something like that that's an easy easy thing to remedy I'm gonna tightly tie this you can use a pipe cleaner for this or you could also use a zip tie if you needed to but this piece of scrap jute works fine for me 
tying a knot in it and I'm going to start by pulling out the inner loops of each one and because you cut it you'll be able to pull it away and out and it helps for each little section of that bow to stand up nicely it gives it a lot of leg room to stretch out we're going to do this all the way around and the same thing with the top layer we're going to pull it out and to the side and it's going to make a nice little pretty bow I think the colors look great together. Love that denim ribbon. I've had a lot of use out of it and I'm gonna miss it when it's gone. So now we're gonna do the tails. Got a piece of the blue under and a piece of the burlap on top. Just gonna look for our center point. Gonna kind of bunch it up there. and then tie it also with a piece of jute. Always know that you have op options. If it came down to it and you had nothing else, you can use a twist tie from a bread loaf. You know, we make it work when we craft. And I'm just showing you here how you can just use your fingers to curl the edges if you want it curled. And see, this is where the block up there comes in handy. We're going to have lots of space to put our bow. You can do any type of bow you like. If you want something more simple, you could do like a, a shoelace type bow or just a, a two layered bow. Maybe you would want to do a bow with just one loop on each side. So hold that down for a bit until it's dried. You can usually tell because the, the glue will get a little bit cooler. You won't feel the warmth from it if you're using your bare fingertips, but be careful when you do that. Always be safe. I'm just using a clamp to hold it there so I can go ahead and dovetail those ends without causing um, my bow to move around and then you know pull it loose possibly from the glue if it's not dried. And you should be cutting away from yourself, not toward yourself. I don't know what was wrong with my brain today. On this particular day. So there you go. There are the pretty little tails. You can make them longer and curl them if you wanted to. But I didn't want anything to obstruct the view of my beautiful rooster in the middle. That's some remnants of chalk paint on my bow from the back of the where I had sanded on another project. It got a little messy back there, but you won't see it. It's going to be down, so I'm not going to I'm not going to sweat that, right? We don't sweat the small stuff. I know you've heard me say that. So you're going to put a good bit of glue there. Look where you're putting it to make sure that it is over the tails and that it is on top of the block there. But you got it in the right spot and then hold it down. I'm gonna use the clamp to help me out here. Don't worry when things get smushed down, you can always fix it back. That wire and the bows make it so much easier for you to just fluff everything back out. And then once it's had ample time to, to dry and to sit up, you can remove your clamp. And then your project will be complete. What do you guys think about these two flips? Isn't this great? This could be in your house all year long. I love it. It's especially going to be nice, I think, through the summertime. Which one of these do you like best, and do you like the color combination? Thank you so much for stopping by and watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!